1991 with their debut release, Cooley High Harmony, Boys to Men have enjoyed an amazing commercial success and one of the fastest climbs in the history of popular music. Incredibly, less than two years after emerging, they shattered Elvis Presley's long-standing record of 11 weeks at number one on the Billboard Pop Singles Chart with their song, End of the Road. describe our sound as a mellow, melodic, a melodic tone. In 1994, the boys topped themselves with the chart buster, I'll Make Love to You, which spent a record 14 weeks at number one on the Hot 100. I'll make love to you. In a time when gangster rap and grunge dominate the music scene, Boys to Men have surprisingly racked up multi-platinum sales and a slew of Grammy Awards on the basis of their traditional love ballads. One of the reasons that we feel like the ballads are successful for us is that we feel more comfortable singing them. The ballads are more smoother, and you can control your vocals a lot better on ballads. to balance a lot more because of the way they feel and also the lyrical content. The romantic ballads that boys to men sing have become their trademark, but they're also a part of their heritage. The boys grew up in Philadelphia, which in the 70s gave birth to a generation of balladeers and a style of music known as the Philly Sound comprised of sweet melodies and lush orchestrations performed by groups like the Spinners, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, and the Delphonics. Well, the Delphonics sound is, is actually, ours is kind of similar to theirs as far as balladry because I'm it's very smooth and it's, it's, you know, it has a lot of falsettos going on here in full the Falsetto, man. We try to bring back good music, which was something that the Motown and Philadelphia sound held. We try to bring back, you know, real singing and just, you know, start all over again. Can somebody tell me how to get things made the way they used to be? Besides their common love for music, the boys also share similar family backgrounds. They were all raised in single-parent households, which shaped the men they've become. My influences uh, would actually be my family in general. My biggest influence is my mother. Just to see her hard work and dedication, just to struggle and make sure that things were right for the family. There's my father. He wanted to, you know, kind of teach me and my sister, you know, the ways of the Lord. And, you know, he's trying his best. <laughs> the first few stages growing up was my mother, and she showed it by her actions as far as, like, being a person who could take care of five children on her own and still provide for us. We still had great Christmases. We still had food on the table, and she did the best that she could, you know, by herself. What got things rolling for the guys musically was attending Philadelphia's prestigious high school for the creative and performing arts, where they first met. Nate and Mike came in in 85. Yeah. Yeah. I came in in 86, and Wanya right. came in in 87. What made me wanted to go to the high school for creative and performing arts was, was fame. The show mm -hmm. fame. <laughs> Everybody's singing in the hallway, yeah. and dancing, you know, making up songs out of nowhere. <laughs> My music teachers were kind of the ones who guided me through elementary and junior high school. I didn't even want to go 
to this school at the time because, you know, I I was so set on, you know, just going to a regular high school. But they kind of pushed me into doing it. My dad told me, you know, either go or I'm going to kick you behind. So I went. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, really, I owe that to my